I was once an international student and I've been able to gather a lot of information when it comes to securing funds for training. The other important thing to this is I've also met a lot of people and I've been able to get a lot of information from them on how they were able to fund their training. I get this question a lot from a lot of my viewers and I thank you for subscribing if you are one of those. And uh, the question is how did I sponsor myself through training or how did I get the funds for training? And generally, I noticed that all these questions often revolve around funding, money, and how they can, you know, start training as soon as possible. So in this video, I'll be covering that. So if you're new here, my name is Steven, and on this channel, we talk about aviation, and most importantly, on how you can achieve your goal of becoming a pilot. I have my notes in front of me. This is going to be slightly long. I'll try to be as direct as much as possible. So right from the gate, one thing I would like to set straight is this. A lot of people often look at the whole cost of training. For example, the average cost of training from zero to maybe commercial, nowadays around 86,000. Some will be a little bit more, some will be a little bit less. But the point here is when you hear that number, you tend to get scared and you try to pretty much throw in the towel and say, you know what, maybe this is too much for me. But in reality, what really happens is that a lot of us could have gone a step further and actually break down the training into phases. So for example, you don't necessarily have to start from private up onto commercial all at once. You can always break down the training and take it step by step. So for example, you could start with your private and complete that, get a license and then come back again when you have money to do your instrument commercial. And of course, if you want to proceed on to do your CFIs, then you can proceed on later on. But the point here is by breaking down the training into phases, it makes it a lot easier. Word of caution though, if you are going to break down your training, try to make sure that you have enough to cover at least the critical phases of training. So for example, if you're going to do your private first, make sure you have enough to cover the private course because you don't want to start and stop in between and take maybe, you know, six months off or a year off and come back again because what will happen is you end up coming to start all over again. Preferably, if you can do your private and instrument together, that is actually a very good thing because that way when you come back to do your commercial, you're just going to refresh some few things from an instrument and a few things from a private and then you can then move on to do your commercial. And generally, your commercial is actually done on a different airplane. Now, let's not talk about the funding aspect of things, which I believe a lot of you are interested in. The first thing is, you always recommend you start with a loan. If you do not have the funds, or if you're, you're not able to find someone to fund it for you, like a family member, then start with a loan from a local bank. The reason why this is a place to start is because you have ties to that country, to wherever you're from. So that means if there are assets that are available in that country that you may have or your family may have, those are collaterals that can be used to secure these funds if, you know, I guess your family is willing to sponsor you or at least support you in that, in that direction. One thing that you need to understand is as an international student, especially in the United States, it is very hard and almost impossible to find sponsorships from the United States. And that is just because there are no ties to the country. You can easily come here and they will sponsor you and then you leave. And then what else are they going to hold on to? Nothing. But if you find a sponsor or maybe a bank from your own country, you have a higher chance of being able to secure that funding to start training. The next point I have here is, of course, loans from family members. And this is definitely something that you probably would have thought about before actually going to a bank but it's an option that I wrote down. Next thing is you want to sell assets. You could sell assets to secure the funds that are necessary for your training. If you think about it, let's assume that your great grandfather, your great grandfather had lands, or maybe your father has a bunch of lands that are not being used. Why don't you sell them and use the fund for training? The next thing I have here is what about you putting in some work? That is get a job that maybe can help you save some money and along the way you can also gather some money from maybe family members or maybe get a loan from a bank and pretty much put all of this together to try to fund your training. Now once you exhaust these options that I believe are within your own control the next phase that I believe you should go to when it comes to funding training is the government and I know that this is a little bit out of your control because you are unable to determine how much you can get from the government or how much they can they are willing to support you in this process but government sponsorships are things that you need to consider. 
And this is why you may need to visit your local government offices to talk to someone and ask about your sponsor, uh, sponsored programs. Some actually, some actually do sponsor pilots through training. But again, this is something that you have to research yourself based on the country you're from. You can think about organizations that are within your area. Some organizations do provide sponsored programs or at least sponsored training or education because that is one of their civic duties. And of course, this also benefits the, the, the organizations because they're able to write off most of these expenses as tax write-offs when it comes to taxes for the organization. Depending on how your tax laws work, this is something that I believe you should consider. The next thing here is to consider philanthropists in your country, in your area. Now, of course, you would need to make sure that this person, you know, you have access to them or to him or her, but also you would need to make sure that you have the right package ready to go along with your uh, presentation of why you want to go for training. And I'll be covering that in a minute. The next option here when it comes to being able to start training is to consider airlines and their programs that they offer. Some airlines do offer cadet programs. You should always consider those as options. But I know that not a lot of international or foreign airlines do offer cadet programs. So it is, uh, it is can be a bit difficult, but it's an option that I know that some airlines in foreign countries do offer. So consider that. The next thing that you believe you should consider is military sponsored programs. And this may require you to join the military, but again, <laughs> something has to give. Nothing is free. So you did it, it's either you serve so that you can benefit from the benefits, you can earn the benefits from the military or you don't and you don't get the benefits. So I understand if you need to serve, if that is something you are able, then that is a way, that is actually a very cheap way to go and uh, get this training done without, without incurring any loans. One thing to watch out for though, whether it's a cadet program or the military programs, there's generally a bond that you sign which means it ties you like a contract that ties you with them for a duration of time maybe four years maybe five years maybe seven years i don't know you need to consider that in the decision making the next step here that i have down is for you to consider visiting your local flight school or at least your flight school within your country take a trip down there and talk to people or maybe phone calls emails whatever way you need to connect with them try to do that because that way they may have some inside information that you don't have and that information might be something that would separate you from being able to get sponsored or not for example some schools are required to sponsor a certain group of people and you may qualify for those people because you know of your situation so you need to consider that as an option so in order to make sure that you are able to get the necessary attention you need and to be taken seriously I have a recommendation for you and the recommendation is try to get a few of these documents when, it come, when you're trying to present your case. The first thing is get an acceptance letter from a flight school that you're planning to go to. The reason why you need this is it shows that you have done the work to get accepted and you just need, you literally that left is the fund. The next thing that you should get from a flight school or the training facility is the training program details and the cost breakdown of your training. The reason why this will become very handy is when you present your case or when you try to talk to someone, whether it's a bank or a philanthropist or it's a government, when you show them the cost breakdown, they can see that this is not something that you made up and you're just, just asking them for, let's say, $70,000 just so that you can go spend it. By them seeing that document, they can see that it's an official thing from the training facility that you're planning to attend. The next recommendation I have is here is career opportunities in that field. Try to get the necessary documents to show that this field that you're embarking on or this journey that you're embarking on is not going to be a waste. And that means that, you know, by the time you complete your training, you hope to be able to find a job right away and be able to start repaying them the money that you hold. In regards with career opportunities, the other thing that you can also do is to actually to get an employment letter from these airlines that are available to you. For example, some airlines will write you an employment letter stating that upon completing training, they will hire you. Of course, there's no guarantees, but that just shows that you've done a lot of work and you're able to show that once you get back or once you complete your training, you can start making money right away and you're able to repay the loans or the debt that you hold. The important thing here is you don't want to train the towel just stating that it's impossible because there's so many ways that people achieve their goals and you just have to find what works for you. Now, if you haven't seen my video on the questions to ask for starting flight training, then check out this video.